You just bought your MIDI controller. You've got it connected to Ableton Live. You've got a sound pulled up, a beautiful piano preset pulled up, and you're ready to play. As soon as you put your fingers on the keys and start to play, you notice that it's really difficult to play in time. And in fact, there's a delay between when you hit the key and when you hear your audio. That's called latency. And latency can be fixed really easily in Ableton Live. And I wanna show you in this video how to reduce your latency when you're recording your instruments so that you can create really playable, expressive um, MIDI parts and uh, really have fun creating stuff in Ableton Live as opposed to trying to force your way through dealing with the latency. So I've already got my MIDI controller connected. I've got Ableton Live open. Uh, I've got a piano sample loaded in. Uh, my track is ready to go. Okay. Uh, if, if you're at this point and you don't hear audio, you're running into some issues, check out a link in the description in this video where I share some troubleshooting tips to, to say, Hey, here's how to potentially diagnose that. But let's talk about this latency. Again, latency is the delay between when I hit a key and when I hear it. And that gets really difficult when you're trying to play parts, trying to play in time, uh, particularly if you're a really good piano player and you try to play a virtual piano, it's a nerve wracking experience the first time. I'm not a great piano player, but even still it's a nerve wracking experience at the first time. So, I'm going to go into live's preferences. Uh, this is command comma if I'm on a Mac, uh, if I'm on a PC, uh, then it is control comma. Now, if you go to this section under the audio tab, so click the audio tab, go to the latency section here. Uh, if you look at the buffer size, my buffer size is all the way up, all right? 2,048 samples. Now, just really quickly again, to get to the point in this video, to reduce your latency, I'm gonna go as low as I can possibly go with my buffer size. And there's a couple considerations we have to consider, but I'll talk about that in a moment. So I'm gonna go down to 32 samples. Now, now obviously you're not here in, in the studio with me, uh, but as I play the keys now, it, it feels like a real instrument. It feels like a real piano. As I play, I hear the sound, I can play in time. Um, it's responding the way I want to. So if you do that and it fixes it, great, you're good to go. But sometimes you have to balance how low you can go with your latency versus how much um, uh, 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 latency you can tolerate. So how low can I go with my buffer size versus how much lat latency I can tolerate? If you're experiencing crackling and popping in your audio, I I'm linked to a tutorial below um, where you can check out how to solve that. But in order to see that, again, you've got to click the link in the description of this video uh, to solve that problem. And again, if you're running into issues in the first place where you don't hear audio from your MIDI controller uh, in your MIDI uh, setup, then make sure to check out the link in the description for that as well too. If you want to learn more about using Ableton Live, particularly using Ableton Live on stage to perform with, then subscribe to this YouTube channel. I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central, showing you how to perform on stage with Ableton Live. We talk about troubleshooting issues like this, uh, the best gear to use for live performance, how to run tracks in Ableton Live, as well as a few podcasts and other fun uh, tips and tricks. So I would love to see you hit subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post new content every single day at 10 a.m. Central. And you can choose to watch it, choose to ignore it. But I hope to see you on the next one. Again, 10 a.m. Central. Take care, everybody. Bye.